single program, so to speak, uh, to selling it and then the implementation. One of the things I suspect is the case here that was not true with master kids is I'm assuming much of the taxation that might be in place here would require 50% plus one vote. Um, don't know that. Whereas master kids was 60% plus one vote. So uh, that if I had to, if I could choose one versus the other, <laughs> I'd, I'd choose the 50% plus one vote. Mm -hmm. So, uh, however, the front end planning process where, so back to your analogy, which I think is a great analogy, the front end planning process where, where these these types of efforts and the and the uh, the committee processes themselves and the publication about them as they occur with master kids was part of part of the selling process that the community was engaged there was a good thoughtful planning process and the use of that process to communicate to to the community as you did it mm -hmm. and so by the time you get to the vote you hopefully had good public relations to sell people into the 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 hard work and the planning that was done on the front end mm -hmm. so i think this has a pretty direct parallel you've got one other problem though that that one had a finite end to it yeah this one Great, yeah. great point. Yeah. So, so if you're going to sell yeah. it, you got to determine first. You want to sell it as a temporary and see how it works, and then go back, or do you want to start off with the with the reality of the fact that it's not going to end. Yeah. In, in a sense, they were already funding the operations. Mm -hmm. They weren't funding the capital. Here, they're going to be asked to fund both, mm -hmm. and they're really not funding the operations today. I mean, they, they technically are, but they don't they don't realize yeah, that's that's right. Right. But, but we're going to ask them mm -hmm. to vote on a tax. It's not. Yeah, gonna, that's that's, that's gonna a great end. point. So that well, but that's a longer term commitment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What that may speak to is what are the what what is what potential is there for some level of performance? In other words, uh, the analogy there might be and this is not operation versus capital, but um, in the original maps, needing an extension and getting the ballpark open before you go back and ask for the extension. The, with the, since there, the, the since potential really exploded, and then I think it was easier to get support for the extension of it, if I recall the sequence of events. Here, the question, the question might be, what happens with the, the rail in Oklahoma City? If I were to make an analogy to the other, what happens to the rail in Oklahoma City? Is it open and operating um, first before you ask for accompanying funds on a broader basis. I don't know if that's possible. Well, that's a great that's point possible. because the like sense of potential would explode. Sure. Right. Like we mentioned, the streetcar is going to serve a purpose for the bigger system, but it also is going to serve Oklahoma City's downtown local needs for transit and connectivity. It's also going to serve as a selling point. And if, it, if the streetcar is successful and opens and people flock to it, and it's got ridership and the public perceives it as successful, you're going to have more of a tendency to get them to go, oh, it works here. You know, so many people think, oh, it's not going to work in Oklahoma anymore. And so that's a that's a big point. But that's going to be seen by an experience by those people that are kind of in downtown, in and around downtown on a daily basis. Right. And, but the, so to me, the only slight difference between this and, say, Maps for Kids is at least with Maps for Kids, everybody, almost everybody, could see that directly affecting them no matter where they live, as long as they're living in a school district that's being funded by that same tax. Whereas here, I think because of the intramodal nature of it, because downtown is a hub, you'll have some people who, um, frankly, don't give a darn about it unless they're one of those people who are coming in downtown. The, the challenge will be convincing them that it's a benefit to them. And I think there's a, your, your baseline of who, who it's benefiting is lower, at least who perceives it as being a benefit to them, is lower than you had with master kids. Yeah, I think you are going to have to carve out sections of the geography who are probably not going to benefit from them because they're not likely to, to be poor. Where that's troublesome for me is that northwest Oklahoma City is a wonderful voting base for us. A lot of positive energy there at the polls. There aren't rail lines. Going. There might be commuter bus traffic. There might be bus rapid transit. But there's not rail lines going northwest. One of the other pieces of this, <clears throat> folks, is to, uh, for all of us, is to remember that we're putting ourselves in the same position that other great leaders did 40, 50, 60 years ago when they made decisions that they did, didn't have to make them. They did not have to build uh, Stanley Draper right, or Overholz or at that time. Uh, in, in, in and in Norman, uh, cities that built brick reservoirs long before they were really needed. Um, and so 
so we have a chance also to appeal to people's uh, opportunity to be um, really visionaries for their community. So North West Oklahoma City and uh, folks that live on the uh, west side of downtown where, where the rail will initially be, they have a chance to really talk about uh, people have to make some really great decisions for the long term future. Aren't we glad people make great decisions for us about water and, and other major issues for our community? So I think we also have to Mayor, I think, Mayor, that's a great point you made about Northwest Oklahoma City. And it's easy to get excited about the rail portion, and sometimes I get accused of talking all about rail that I don't care about buses or bus systems, and that's not true. It, it, you'll have to make sure that you sell the whole package, that the RTD is not just about rail. It's about bus rapid transit. It's about a bigger bus systems. It's about service for everybody. And that's a real, that's a big point because you've got to get all the demographic involved. Uh, and it is easy to talk about that part. And uh, so I think that's important. Yeah, Blair? Along those lines, you're just thinking about where they, like, I wonder if it's possible to use some of the log long strategies that have looked from maps. Um, clearly, this would be led by transit for transit, but something like a regional park plan that's overlaid on it or some type of uh, major commercial nodes that or some provided infrastructure of some type. And so while it's for the purpose of, of pushing through the regional transit system, um, those areas that might not benefit directly, perhaps there's some other things we could throw out. That seemed to work for maps for kids. It's worked in terms of pulling together different stakeholder groups and maps. Um, and I wouldn't rule it out here. I don't know if parks can change things. Maybe there's something else. Mm -hmm. Tom? Well, the dovetail on that idea, you know, one one thing that affects all of us is Tinker. And uh, if, if this helps keep uh, Tinker alive and well with all the base closings, <coughs> uh, I think that's something that the public will uh, will support. They, they've supported taxes for Tinker before. Yeah, if, if Tinker were to say, this is a priority to us, that would matter. Yes. It would matter a lot to everybody in this whole area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another, another layer with the group. Just, you got Tinker and the universities, which hits a, a definite uh, target demographic of transit ridership anyway. Um, maybe, you know, maybe a couple living out in northwest Oklahoma City, they think I'm never going to ride transit, but they have a kid in college and think they might go. So, so piggybacking onto this, so um, in, if, if I take your presentation, Marion, straight on in terms of the structure of the, of the commuter rail light rail and so on. Um, tying in the layout of that, if I understood some of the shading ideas of tax districts versus funding versus non outside the funding, that's anyway. So I think that's that was, uh, am I understanding that correctly? Well, slide, the, those slides that came out of Tom's, the government's finance subcommittee, you know, I think part of the thing is that if you look at how those were, you've got your population densities, you've got your employment yeah. densities. That's the last page. Yeah. I, was, I was looking at this uh, topic 16. You know, the uh, problem, that, the thing, problem yeah. that Dallas had, and Dallas was one of the earlier systems out west, they started out and said, okay, we're going to do this city by city. Yeah. Okay, Dallas is, we're going to do it, and let's ask Plano if they want to do it, and let's ask Carrollton. And boy, they had a terrible time to do it on a city basis. The other way is a county basis. Well, boy, there's a lot of people out in rural Norman, and they're never going to vote for this. And I think, Tom, <coughs> you all came up with this idea of how you can cut it up in the smallest pieces, which were precincts. So we, we tried, go ahead. The question, the question I leave to from my standpoint was, if this focuses around uh, the rail, but the effect of the rail is to fundamentally change the way you use bus service. So the bus, but I mean, I'm just saying this hypothetically, I don't know if this is true. If the primary purpose of the bus is no longer to cut all the way across the city, but instead to feed into the rail, then the bus obviously could easily well run well outside of a zone, and yet is essential to have the program hang together. So I don't know what that means from a funding standpoint in particular at the time. Well, you know, it's the green lines on that, the easiest ones to see is on that top, the top images. Those are yeah. BRT routes. And, you know, if you had a big regional bus system that was on a grid, it's going to crisscross, you know, almost the, the, whole, you know, the whole area. I'm not sure I understand the point of the 
Well, are you you're saying yes? You would step up the budget. You just run a different route system than you do today. Well, I think that's what they're looking. That's what they're looking. Yeah, that's what they're looking at. For, for instance, in Albuquerque, the Rail Runner has uh, just a north-south line, yes, and, right. and the buses are all running east-west and, yeah. and service the whole city that way. Right. It's, Which seems to make sense. And ties the whole city, even even the parts that are far away from the track, yeah. are all benefiting. But your tax district looks broad enough here that if, if the boundaries are intended to be a tax district, at least in the city with a density of population, it would seem to accommodate the, uh, the bus piece as well. Tried, they, they, we tried to, to, to pattern that after the density issues that we had, or the density uh, areas we had. And then the jagged line simply was an attempt to not split precincts. Right. When you got to certain areas, you tried to make sure that, that only full precincts were included in the taxing authority. So that's why you have some of those, some of the kind of weird jagged uh, lines. And that's going to have to be updated too, since mm -hmm. since the last census precinct lines have been changed. They're going to have to look at that again. But generally speaking, it, it encompassed most of the areas where the primary ridership would probably come from. So yeah. those people would have a vested interest. That's correct. It was over 90% of the population and 95% of the within those districts. Mm -hmm. And the other thing to remember on that, especially if you use sales tax, is you encompass the majority of the retail area that, that, that basically contributes to that. So you don't have some <coughs> big tax uh, you know, situation where they have an advantage outside that district over the people within it. If you, and you know, how do they vote within those boundaries? That's, a, that's, that's important too. It goes back to Roy's point here. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If, if I remember right, I think I was told, and I, I say things, so don't, don't hold me to this as factual, but I think uh, someone told me that the city of Irving's voters have been paying into the, the BART system for 30 years, and they're just now getting rail. But they were paying in the early 80s, and of course the system's been expanded. But I mean, that takes vision. Yeah. Uh, for, uh, <laughs> and, they have, and they have to revote every so often. It's, oh, not, really? it's not enough. In it's fact, not. when Jerry Jones was trying to build his, to he was going to build his new stadium, he tried to get the BART vote to fail so that that tax would fall off of Irving's uh, uh, taxable situation so it would be available for him to build a new stadium. He didn't win it, but he tried to beat it. Yeah, shall we say yeah, that? I mean, the early years, the early years, it was pretty sketchy. I mean, there was, there was actually a couple, I think, left back in the days because, you know, they have a cap on sales tax down there and all that kind of good stuff. But now, they're all trying to get, you know, more, you know, they're all back in. Yeah. yeah. Well, they have traffic congestion. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think that's the way to sell the whole thing is people go away from pain more quickly than they go toward comfort. Mm -hmm. And they are in a lot of pain in the traffic. And if you ask the average citizen, I think their solution 100% uh, of the time is going to be put more lanes of, on, on the roads. So we kind of have to draw the whole picture. Well, here's the pain. Here's a different solution than maybe you're thinking immediately, but it, but it gets us to the same solution of that problem and it ultimately allows for more economic growth in the community. It's nice to know that in some of the recent cities that have solutions to be a program, they're also carpentry areas. Mm -hmm. You know, they're in the big wide yeah. expanses in the West like Albuquerque and Salt Lake and, and, and Minneapolis. So th these aren't just in high density living areas that these have come to fruition. So I think we have a chance to overcome sort of everybody's got two cars and we drive both of them every day. I swear to goodness, every student brings two camp cars to campus every day. <laughs> not know how they do it, Craig. I know you're the same. And, and, and I'm sure it's true down in Norman at OU. Well, I am a commuter and I have a, we have an office in Edmond and I live in Norman. And I can tell you, I, if there was a train there, I'd be riding it every day. And, and, I, and, and you know, Doug's talked about this, you know, as soon as they finished, I've been watching them drive back and forth for 20 years widening I-35, and as soon as they finished it, it's already at level service E, and it's full. Right. And we're just we're just finished it, and uh, you know we're even gonna put more lanes. Yeah. Well, the more lanes aren't gonna relieve really traffic. Right. It's right. Just gonna leave the more traffic. Mm -hmm. and, and oh God has already told us in Norman that once they're done with the wide yeah. lanes, there is no more room. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> is true. Finally, eight lanes of traffic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you come down, you gotta go right on it. Yeah. Oh.
<laughs> I gotta get over eight lanes here and I got a half a mile. Like, <laughs> and it is a mindset though. I'm going all the way to Waco and turn around. Because no one ever, you know, when you mentioned, you know, the wide of Broadway extension, that was the greatest thing ever. You know, and, and however hundreds of millions of dollars that were spent on that. And you know, then you mentioned, you know, maybe commuter rail for such and such. You, you, and you know, I've had people say, you, you're meaning to tell me we're gonna spend such and such million dollars, hundreds of million dollars to develop this commuter line. But I, I say to them, I don't remember you, you know, being concerned about when we widen Broadway Extension, the eight lanes, you know, that. It's just that mindset, you know, that it, they don't see it as transportation. And, uh, you have to get around that. Well, we should probably move to item six on the agenda. That's the next meeting date. subcommittees and begin some of the work on, on the various aspects of the focus areas, we'd like to do that. Um, if there's anything else you'd like us to do, we'd be happy to do it. So we just need to get your guidance. Yeah. Any research, any additional information or direction for staff? Well, I think reaching out to Tinker might be a good first step. We have a person from Tinker on the committee. I know uh, Stafford, right? Is that his name? Uh, Colonel Wood. Colonel Wood, yeah. Colonel Wood. Yeah. Stephen Wood, that's his yeah. name. Yeah. Uh, he's on this committee, it's just not here today. Mayor, too, I, you know, when we do inner city visits, you know, most of the cities we've gone to have had transit systems. And we made certain our leadership has seen those transit systems and frequently been those transit systems. So I don't know, maybe at some point in time, we ought to try to start getting some key focused folks to some of these kind of transit systems that are somewhat close and begin making some visits to them so they know hands-on what we're talking about. Because I'm amazed at how many people have never been on a public transit system. We assume that they do, and they don't. And until they ride an Amtrak or ride a bus or ride a rapid transit system, they don't know what we're talking about. Yeah, right. No, that's very true. That's a great idea. Well, that's the general headwind that you're going to have and educating them is when you say public transportation, I mean, the key's already been turned. Um, so. We've used Amtrak for our uh, board retreats, and it's amazing how many people have never been on them, but how cool they thought they were once they rode them. You know, you look at um, Doug's short 10 year timeline. Uh, that's mine. I'm not sorry. It just seems to me that governance is going to be a sticky wicket, and we might get started on it as soon as we could, because I think there are going to be a lot of details to be worked out. Um, it just seems to wait until 2014 for that discussion. It seems to be awfully long. Sure. We can certainly do that. We welcome volunteers from this committee to sit on that subcommittee too. We'll send out emails to let you know when we get those things structured. Well, Doug, maybe it'd be good at the next meeting to review what we went through last time on that specifically. Okay. We came up with a, a consensus sure. on what at the time we thought looked best and why. Yeah. Although I can't say that it was a, you know, it wasn't like there was one method that was just a lot better than all the others. But we came with one that probably made the most sense for us. We could kind of go through that yeah. next time. Yeah, no, 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 we can certainly do that. Yeah, and the thinking behind it. And yeah. We could review it and revisit it. Very good. Because uh, I, I think you're right. I mean, that's that's because uh, because our our other elected officials and appointees are kind of be wondering where we're headed with this. And uh, the, the sooner we have some direction and can defend it, probably the better off we are. Roy. Are you okay if we work with some of your staff on the polling stuff? Sure. Because you guys got the most experience with that. I'd like to drag that in. Sure. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.
Okay. Uh, we have a spot for new business. I'm, sure, I'm assuming everybody 